myself Shrata Shah. I am your instructor for the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. In this subject, we are going to start today Unit 4 that is Microprogram Control. And in this unit, we are going to see today the topic that is Control Memory. Before going with the topic, let me see what are the outlines for this unit 4 that is Microprogram Control. In this unit, we are basically going to see how the micro operations are generated for your particular instruction. So let me see what are the outlines for this unit. These are like first we will see the control memory, then we will see the address sequencing and mapping of the instruction, then we will see the hardware configuration for your computer, then we will see the microprogram instruction format and lastly we will see the microprogram sequencer. So let me first start with the first topic and before that let me see uh, some of the ba basic definitions like the hardware control. Uh, when the control signals are generated by the hardware using the conventional uh, logic design technique, then this control is uh, known as a hardware. Uh, if the uh, control unit whose binary control variables are stored in the memory are called as a microprogrammed control unit. And one another variation to this microprogrammed control unit is a dynamic microprogramming. In this, uh, it is a more advanced development that is known as a dynamic microprogramming that permits the microprogram to be loaded initially from the auxiliary memory such as a magnetic disk and the control unit that uses this dynamic microprogramming employs a writable control memory and this type of memory can be used for the writing purpose. So by this way we can uh, use the hardware control unit or the microprogrammed control unit or we can use this dynamic microprogram. We are basically going to see how your microprogrammed control unit works. That means you will write, so we are going to see how the micro operations are generated for your particular instruction by means of some instructions. Okay, so that means these are the instructions for your instruction. Okay, so let me further see uh, the control memory. That the control memory is the storage in the microprogram control unit to store this microprogram. Uh, the writable control memory, that means the control storage whose content can be modified allowed uh, the changes in the microprogram, and the instruction set can be changed or modified at are referred as the writable control memory. And third thing is the control word. The control variable at any given time can be referred as a control word and it is the string of zeros and one that defines what controls are generated for your particular instruction. That means what micro operations are generated for your particular instruction. So uh, next we will see the micro operation. In a computer central processing unit, the micro operation or you can say micro op uh, are detailed low level instruction used in some design to implement the complex machine instruction or you can say in micro instruction. Okay, so this micro operations are basically designed for designing the micro instruction. So let me see what is the micro instruction. A symbolic microprogram can be translated into a binary equivalent by means of an assembly that we already learned. Uh, each line of the assembly language program defines a symbolic micro instruction. Okay? And each symbolic micro instruction is divided into five fields that are labels, micro operations, CD, BR, and AD. What is this AD, BR, and CD that we will see further onwards? But your basically micro instructions are consisting of five parts that is label, micro operation, CD, BR and AD. These micro operations are nothing but this basic operation that you are going to be perform like add operation, subtract operation and so on. So basically your micro operations are used to design some micro instruction or you can say your micro instructions are consisting of some micro operations. Next, we will see the microprogram. A sequence of this micro instruction constitutes a microprogram. Since the alteration of the microprogram are not needed once the control unit is in operation, uh, is in operation the control memory can be uh, known as a read-only memory or you can say as a ROM memory. The ROM words are made permanent during the hardware production of the unit. So your this memory 
or you can say ROM memory or micro program memory is fixed for your particular instruction set. If you are changing your instruction set, then your micro program is going to be changed. Okay. Uh, the use of micro program involves pricing all the control variables in, uh, in a word of a ROM for use by the control unit through successive read operations. And the content of the word in the ROM at a given address specifies the micro instruction. So by this way we can constitute your micro program by using this micro instruction. And this micro instructions are made up of the micro operations. And lastly we will see the micro code. Uh, the micro instructions can be saved by uh, employing subroutine that common section of a micro code. Uh, for example, the sequence of a micro operation needed to generate an effective address of OPRAN for an instruction is common to all memory reference instruction. The sequence could be subroutine that called from uh, within many other routines to execute the effective address computation. So, by this way, so by this way we can use the micro code. Next, we will see the organization of the micro programmed control unit. So, uh, the general configuration of the micro programmed control unit is uh, shown over here in this block diagram. It is consisting of the next address generator, generator or you can say sequencer, then it is having a control address resistor, then it is having control memory or you can say ROM, and then it is having the control address resistor. Here, here, the control address resistor contains the address location that, that where you have stored your micro instruction inside the ROM. So, by using this address location, you can access the ROM and the control data resistor contains the data from that location that is your actual micro operation that you have to perform. That information is over there in the resistor. And the next address generator is used for generating the next address in your sequence. Here basically we can say that the control memory is assumed to be wrong within which all the control information is permanently stored. The control memory address register specifies the address of the micro instruction and the control uh, data register holds the micro instruction that you have read from the memory. Next we can say that the micro instruction contains the control word that specifies one or my, more micro operations for the data processor. Once these micro operations are executed, the control must determine the next address and the location of the next micro instruction can be one next in the sequence or it may be located somewhere else in the control memory also. Uh, while the micro operations are being executed, the next address is computed in the next address generator circuit and then it is transferred to the control register to read the next micro instruction and that address can be sequ in, in sequence or can be out of sequence that is generated by the next address generator block and that is provided in the control address register to access the next instruction. Here also we can say that the micro instruction contains the bits for initiating the micro operation in the data processor part and that bits are determined the address sequence for the control memory. Okay, So this is the basically your organization, how we can organization. The next address generator is a sum time called as a micro program sequencer as it determines the address sequence that reads from the control memory. A typical function of a micro program sequencer are incrementing the control address resistor by 1 and loading into the control address resistor an address from the control memory. And next thing is a transferring an external address or loading an initial address of or to start the control operation for next instruction. Okay, so this is the basic task for the micro program sequencer. Here uh, you can say that uh, the control data resistor holds the present micro instruction while the next address is computed in the read for the memory. Okay? So next address is generated in your next address generator unit and your uh, data for your, your this particular instruction is stored in the control data resistor. 
Here, uh, the data register is sometimes also known as a pipeline register. It, it allows the execution of the micro uh, in operations specified by the control word simultaneously with the generation of your my next micro instruction. So, by this way, you can use your uh, C. This configuration requires a two phase clock. One uh, with clock applied to the address register and other to the data register. The main advantage of the micro program control is the fact that once the hardware configuration is established, there should be no need for further hardware or wiring changes. If we went if we want to establish a different control sequence for the system, all we need to do is to specify the different set of the micro instruction for the control memory. So by default, by changing just the control memories contained, you can use the another sequence or another instruction set. So we are ending our today's session over here. If you have any query, then you can contact me.